Today is Monday, June 26th. This is Joe Reingold interviewing Alan Luderman. Good afternoon, Alan. Good afternoon to you. Tell me a little bit about your family, where they came from, what you recall about your grandparents and your parents, and how they got to Dallas, Texas. Okay. My father uh, came with his, parent, with his mother, actually, uh, in 1917, I believe, from uh, Kodny, Poland, which is, uh, I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. It, it's really interesting because I just recently found out about where it was. My dad always, since he came at such a young age, I really uh, didn't have a much of a recollection, so he never could pinpoint it for me. He always just used to say he was from New Jersey. <laughs> but um, he, they, he came in with his uh, two siblings, the three brothers, uh, Sam, William, and, and my dad, whose name was Isidore, uh, came in 1917 with their mother. My grandfather, Zalik, came sometime earlier. I'm not sure exactly, but he came and... Um, uh, sent for them when he was able to do so. And uh, like I said, they came from Poland. My mother uh, came from uh, Poland in 1937, I believe it was, uh, from um, what she used to call Zeszna Bugim, which always used to throw me, but I finally figured out after some research that it was really Brest. And at one time it was Brest, and it was, uh, then it was Brest Litovsk. And, it was, uh, she called it Zeszna Bugim, which was breast on the Bug River, which is where it is. And she came uh, to, uh, to stay with her aunt and uncle, um, uh, Sarah and uh, Reuben Gilbert. Who, uh, Sarah was um, her aunt, and uh, Reuben was, of course, her uncle by marriage. And uh, so she came in, in, like I said, 37, sometime. Between then and 1940, she met my father, and they they married, and I was born a year later, actually 364 days later. Where so, were they living at the time? In Dallas. Oh, uh, right. In Dallas, and um, why did they decide to come here of all places? They being your your parents. Well, I'm not sure about my grandfather, but my my mother came here, but to stay with her aunt to stay with her aunt and uncle. Uh, she uh, had uh, three siblings, two uh, sisters and a brother, and her parents still in Poland when the war broke out, or right before the war broke out, and uh, seeing through the news media what was going on there, she urged them via uh, by writing them letters uh, that uh, they should get out, and in fact they did, uh, literally almost like on the last boat out. Mm. and they came to the United States, could not enter, were not permitted to enter the United States, and they all settled in Montreal, Canada. Canada did accept them. So most of them have all moved here to, uh, that are still alive. All our siblings are now gone, so that whole, uh, but all the offspring are still scattered around. One, my aunt, um, an aunt by marriage is, still lives in Montreal, but spends half her year in, in in Florida, she's a snowbird, and then I have a cousin, her, one of her children, one of her daughters is in Toronto, and the rest are in, in the Philadelphia, um, Cherry Hill, New Jersey area. So that's uh, where they all came from and where they have settled. Okay. Ask me another question. Well, what, <laughs> what neighborhood, where did you grow up? I, I was young? born. In, in September the 21st, 1941, and the, in, in um, St. Paul's Hospital at the time was located on Hall Street. And um, the first home that I was aware of was on a street called Spence in South Dallas, where the Jewish community, for the most part, mm -hmm. resided. And my recollection was growing up there. My first grade school was, um, because my birthday was in September, um, I was not permitted to enter school September the 1st. Um, when I turned, when I was still five, just almost six. So my mother sent me to a private school for the what was equivalent to the fall semester. I think it was called the Lynn School. Mm -hmm. And then, 
since the school that was closest to me did not have midterm uh, entry, I, I did go to another school called Silberstein, which was a little further to the south of, um, it's still in South Dallas, for the, the spring semester. And then during that following summer, we moved to Park Row, 2715 Park Row, and I spent my elementary school years going to uh, John Henry Brown Grade School, and then um, back then you, you started high school, well, or it was called eighth grade, was actually at the Forest Avenue High School, so I'm, I was there for one year. Uh, the following year it was still Forest Avenue High School, and after that it became James Madison and the entire Jewish community you know, migrated, for the most part, north. Did your family migrate or did they stay in that oh, area? We moved. You moved. We moved in the summer of uh, 55. And uh, I, I attended um, the Herzl Heichel Tama Torah, which was uh, the Jewish Hebrew school. Um, I was confirmed there um, and we attended uh, Gudasachim uh, Synagogue, uh, which was a Orthodox synagogue. My grandfather, my father's father, was the Gabbai, and uh, uh, I was bar mitzvah at that uh, synagogue to go to Sachem. Where was that location at the time? It was located on Forest Avenue, it was. and literally right in front of the Herzl Tama Torah um, Hebrew School. Can and you I, walk us through a little bit about the history of or what happened to Agudas Sachem? Well, Agudas Achim, when you know, as everybody moved north for whatever reasons, they chose not to or couldn't. Uh, I, I was too young to know all the politics of Shul's, which is a, another world in itself. And uh, at uh, we, we, we when we moved north, uh, we stayed uh, as members of Agudas Achim for a short while, but then it, I can't remember specifically. I was still a young teenager. But uh, we, we joined Sheriff Israel, and um, we remained there, and I, I still, uh, my wife and I still are members of Sheriff Israel to this day. Um, i trying to think. Uh, but Sheriff, uh, Gudasachim, physically, f the physical plant is, has been torn down because uh, the I-45 mm -hmm. interstate Went right, right through it. Went right through it. <laughs> yeah. In fact, my yeah. first home that I remember, remember on uh, Spence Street has also been demolished now. My grandparents and my aunt, one of my uncles and his family lived on a street that was just south of the synagogue called Wendelkin. And uh, poor, a portion of that street is still there and the portion that my family lived on is still there. And it, uh, it's really amazing to drive down that street and. Uh, and see uh, mm -hmm. what you know, what it's like. Uh, when you were a student, uh, either junior high, high school, what kind of things were you interested in? Obviously, besides scholarship, but what else were you interested in? Well, I don't know. I was athletics. I mean, I, I, I was not a athlete that would be varsity, but I I liked to play um, where I could with you know friends and pick up games and especially on uh, on. On Park Row, uh, we would uh, always have kids. There was, you know, a lot of children in the neighborhood, of which, you know, uh, of similar age, and we would play different things: uh, football, you know, whatever, ride bikes, um, so forth and so on. Go to the theater, you know, um, the Forest Avenue Theater, which, uh, in fact, just recently uh, sold. I, I read somewhere. Um, was built. In, uh, I'm not sure exactly. It was somewhere in the 50, 51 or something like that. And uh, and they always you know, back then um, had you know Saturday programs for show for kids, uh, cereals and yo-yo mm -hmm. contests <laughs> and, and all kinds of you know fun things. And then you'd see a you know. Um, a, a movie, and uh, one thing that kind of strikes me, and I always think about this, is that 
back then we had street cars running on rails, kind of like Dart is now, but back then it was in the Irvy street car would, going straight down Forest Avenue. And uh, today we would walk, you know, but as kids, walking three or four blocks was like, a, you know, walking, a, you know, three miles. So we were all lazy, and, and I remember getting out of the theater one day, and uh, the fare was, I thought, was four cents to go home, which was only about six blocks. Mm -hmm. And um, I had planned, you know, uh, with the money I had that I would have enough, you know, money left to get on the streetcar. And I got on, and the but the streetcar operator said, I'm sorry, but the fare's gone up to a nickel. I can't let you on. So I had to walk home, and I was so upset. <laughs> They've brought some of those streetcars back. That's right. That's I think right. it's great. Can't get on for a nickel anymore, no, though. No, that's true. After Where did you graduate high school? Which school? Well, I, as I said, I went to the eighth grade in, uh, at Forest that's Avenue, right. and then we moved north to a street called Stickter, which is a block north of... Um, Walnut Hill Lane, 6540 Stichter, and uh, which was about two blocks from Hillcrest High School. And I went to Hillcrest High School. My siblings, I have a, a brother and a sister, mm -hmm. each four years younger than the other. And um, we're also a block away from the Preston Hall Ele Elementary School. And so I went to Hillcrest High School mm -hmm. and um, uh, I, I did pretty well in, you know, in um, Academics and uh, um, I think participated in intramural sports and, and so forth. Went out for football, but mother quashed that because she was afraid I was going to get have a broken leg or something. Right. She might have been right. <laughs> so, um, and you went. I said, did you go into college? Graduated Hillcrest. Went to the University of Texas in Austin. Um, pledged. Uh, uh, A.E. Pi, Gamma Deuteron chapter, uh, was one of 32 pledges, one of 13 only that were initiated. The year I was there, we were on social probation because of the misdeeds of the year before academically, so we had no parties. And all I remember about my Greek year was nothing <laughs> other than just being pledged and hazed and so forth. Got initiated and decided that Texas was just too big for me and then I transferred back transferred back home, went to SMU and uh, graduated SMU with a degree in, uh, with a bachelor's degree in chemistry. And um, um, i trying to think what else. What were, what were your first couple of jobs with that? Well, back here. My first job was as a chemist. I worked for Magnolia Chemical Company. I was their chief chemist. I was also their only chemist. <laughs> and uh, I worked for them from 1960, I remember now, 1965 to 1967, about two years. Um, not really happy with it. I, I, I had thought that I wanted to be a dentist. And, only, and, I, and I think back, because I'm not really sure I wanted to be a dentist, but I think my mother wanted me to be a dentist or a professional person. Well, I did not get into dental school and didn't really try that hard. But um, uh, working in a lab convinced me that I didn't want to be a dentist because it was confining, mm -hmm. uh, as, as would be a you know someone working in a small small area that I felt more like a people person. I, th I, I think, I hope I, w I have been over the years, but uh, I, uh, uh, during, oh, in the mean meantime, while we, I was working at Magnolia Chemical Company, I had a, it was during the Vietnam War, and I had an occupational deferment because of uh, the fact that we were making and selling uh, to the uh, federal government uh, uh, solutions that were used for um, prevention of um, bugs and, and you know and things in their blankets and DDT mm -hmm. and so forth, stuff that's outlawed now. But uh, yeah. and I, uh, at a point in time, I uh, my de occupational deferment was uh, over, and I decided uh, that I wanted to uh, 
joined the service, I joined a Army Reserve unit in Mesquite called the 94th General Hospital, and I became, uh, and then I had to go on to uh, active duty, and I did that in the uh, January 2nd, I think it was the day after the New Year's uh, of 1967, went to Fort Polk, Louisiana for basic training, and then on to uh, Fort San Houston uh, in San Antonio for medical training. This was, like I said, a, a, a hospital unit, and I went through all the training, became a, a, a medic uh, equivalent, and then went back and spent six years in that program with two weeks every summer um, for summer camps and so forth. And um, that's how I provided myself. Did, the did you actually go overseas? Never went you overseas. Didn't. We were fortunate that we were not called up, although my unit uh, during Desert Storm and, and subsequent um, actions uh, in the recent years were called up. Um, we, we were a general hospital equivalent to a thousand bed hospital, so we would probably, if we had been called up, gone to someplace like Manila, or for, you know, Philippines, to man up a full-fledged stationary hospital. But uh, anyway, that was uh, my stint in the, in the service. And anyway, during, when I got out of basic training um, in the spring of 67, uh, I had had an opportunity for those several months to think about really what I wanted to do because I really wasn't happy in, in the chemical field. Uh, they were, yeah, they treated me okay, but I, it just wasn't rewarding for me. And I decided to uh, make a change. And my, I had cousins who were in the real estate business, and I spoke with them, and, and they told me you know, about the business. And I said, I think I'd like to try that. And uh, I, was, I was given an offer by a local a real estate company, a real estate broker who had a company that was Harold Collum uh, to join him and I gave notice at uh, Magnolia Chemical and uh, took a position at Magnolia, uh, at uh, uh, Harold Collum Company. And being green and not really knowing much in the way of business, I had not gone through business school, so I, he was very, very nice and very supportive gave me some jobs that, that paid a, a salary in addition to what I might make on commission. And I managed his uh, billboard sign company, um, managed a shopping center that he had on uh, Central Expressway just uh, south of Mockingbird. And uh, anyway, I enjoyed it. I, and when, uh, of course, as the, as the real estate business goes, it's always up and down, <laughs> up and down. And when it got okay. to a down point, I I uh, took a position with a, a developer, Frank Lecoque, mm -hmm. um, and um, he was uh, building office buildings on Walnut Hill Lane, uh, just east of uh, uh, Stemmage Freeway. And these were suburban office buildings, first time in a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, there was a lot of construction outside the central core for office space, and, and people were moving to um, suburban offices for convenience being close to their home right. um, and uh, I was with him for a few years. He also during uh, the course, uh, I joined him in, in 1970, uh, no it was actually, yeah, uh, 60, late 69 or 70 and he developed uh, European Crossroads. No. Which was uh, on Northwest Highway. I was. It's, I managed it. I managed. Uh, he also developed in conjunction with a, a gentleman uh, who had taken a position with him, uh, who had been gone through bankruptcy. A major, major developer named uh, A. W. or Arthur W. Beck, known as Bill Beck, and um, we developed uh, some office buildings in San Mateo, California, which I also was responsible for. Uh, the management of, and it was a wonderful experience. And then when um, he he passed away, and for a short while I was stayed on, and when he passed away, his um, silent partner Reuben Ginsburg, uh, basically it all fell into his lap, and uh, uh, 
I ultimately, um, with um, his passing and with the decline of, um, of that venture uh, and with some associates that I had worked with at uh, uh, the Franklin Co. companies, we formed our own company called GLA and Associates and, and hooked up with some other um, people who uh, had some connections with some financial institutions and we did um, some developments and, and some turnarounds in a, in a difficult uh, real estate market mm -hmm. and, um, and then that ended and then I just became an independent broker and that's what I've been since probably 1980-81. Mm -hmm. I managed some properties for, for Mexican um, nationals, Jewish uh, people. Basically, real, real estate's been my career since 1980, so it's 37 years. And I've been a broker since I uh, actually joined Harold Column in the very beginning, right after I left the chemical business. So I've been a broker almost 50 years. Very good. Okay, so now I want to take you back a little bit and tell us how did you meet Susan, your wife, your now wife? <laughs> One of my dearest friends, his name was Ron. Ronald Fine, Ron Fine, in fact, we still communicate. He lives in Chicago now. And he lived on North Haven, just up the street, about 10 houses from this building, and, which is being remodeled now. I've been sending him pictures <laughs> so he could see the transformation. Yeah. Um, so I forget, I, I had a lot of odd jobs over the years. I uh, didn't really go into any of that, but I had a lot of really interesting jobs. Uh, if you're interested, I'll tell you. Um, while I was in college, I worked for, uh, these are just not necessarily chronologically, but for roadway freight, loading, on, working on docks. Um, when I was in high school, I worked summers for a company called Autoglass Company. Uh, back in college, again, I worked for um, the Russell Miller Milling Company, which was on Irvy, South Irvy, which was a uh, company that manufactured uh, American Beauty flour, mm. and that was a summer job. Um, I worked for the Southern Lead uh, smelter, which is, was very controversial with lead contamination over in Westmoreland a few years ago, but I would go in and, and take samples that they would provide me and, and run some spectrographic tests to give them the results so they'd know the composition of, of their um, Smelter and how they were, what they were producing. Um, I worked for a company called WNS Precision Finishing that did anodizing of aluminum and, and architectural colors. Similar, I would go in, take samples from their um, chemical baths, take them upstairs, and, and run um, analysis to give them the results of, on the composition of their uh, chemicals in their mix. Um, Anyway, those are some of the odd jobs. Uh, I'm, there was others, but uh, um, anyway, so I was working at the time, and I got off work, and I I was going to meet Ronnie at his house, and we were going to go to dinner. So anyway, I went over there for some reason. Ronnie had uh, we didn't have cell phones, by the way, <laughs> so he had either was detained somewhere or wasn't home, or had some other plans or something happened, but Susan was, was there with uh, her friend uh, Cynthia Fine, Ronnie's uh, sister, mm -hmm. uh, sibling number one. He had two sisters uh, age, Cynthia was the oldest and then Phyllis the younger. And I waited for a while and then I was getting hungry and I said, well, you, would you guys like to go out for dinner? And uh, uh, they said yes and that's basically, you know, I, I, I kind of caught uh, the bug and uh, <laughs> became interested and, and called, you know, to, to see her again without Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it, it, it developed from there. And uh, she tells people about me running her over in, in the, in the uh, SMU parking lot or trying to, and that's not true, but that's her story. <laughs> yeah, she did tell that. <laughs> no, she said she accidentally hit you. Whatever. 
prior to that meeting. Right. But anyway, obviously it turned out well. Well, we've been married 52 years, and um, uh, I guess we'll, we'll stay married for the mm -hmm. foreseeable future. And how has your family grown since then? Okay. <laughs> well, um, we uh, were not able to conceive children, so we adopted two children. The first and oldest is our son, Stephen, mm -hmm. uh, who we adopted through the uh, uh, family service. Mm -hmm. And it was a wonderful experience. Uh, he um, came into our home, he was like one day old. And uh, we, we had moved to a street called Regal Oaks. We had lived in a couple other places, starting off on Cole Avenue and then Mary Meadow, and then we ended up on, on uh, uh, Regal Oaks. It was a complex owned by uh, David Frankfurt and David Shalom. And uh, Stephen was born on January the 27th of 1969. And he, uh, like I said, came into our lives at uh, one day old. Mm -hmm. uh, subsequently, we um, adopted Adria, our daughter, through a private attorney. Things changed uh, in the adoption world and they still, I think, change from as time progresses. And um, the attorney was uh, Sidney Diamond, and um, he called us, said he had a um, expected uh, mother who was wanting to place her child in adoption. We said we're in, and um, she was born May the 13th, 1974. And, but she didn't come to us immediately. She, I think, went to a foster home for a short while, and then uh, we had her, you know, I don't remember the exact number of weeks, months, or whatever. But uh, anyway, and they have uh, uh, all grown. Stephen is 48, Adrian is 43, and Stephen lives in uh, New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, very, uh, very successful. He's. Uh, a managing director of J.P. Morgan, um, which is a phenomenal uh, accomplishment since he never graduated high school. Mm. And i um, very proud of that. We don't have a really close relationship, unfortunately, but that's, you know, maybe that'll change. He has two children, uh, Chloe, uh, the oldest, and Harrison, the younger, and they both uh, like I said, they live, and they live, uh, if, if anyone is watching that's familiar with Manhattan, they live in Manhattan, uh, about two doors from the um, Flatiron Building, on the corner of, uh, right off the corner of 22nd and Broadway. Mm. Um, and right around the corner from the Madison Square Park. Um, I think Adria lives here in, in the, in the Area. She lives in Farmer's Branch. She has a, a daughter, uh, Katie, Catherine, who's named after my mother, whose name was Catherine. Mm -hmm. And uh, Isabella, as her middle name, was named after my father, Isidore. Mm -hmm. And she is 10, and they are on their way back from uh, Savannah, Georgia, as we speak, um, where they went. She is active in Girl Scouts, and they went to the birthplace of Juliet Lowe, who was the founder of uh, the Girl Scout program. Must have been a good, good experience for them. Absolutely. I just want you to tell us uh, a little bit about, in your own words, obviously, how has Dallas changed since you were growing up? Well, it's grown all in all directions, and being in the real estate business, uh, it you know obviously I, you'll see a lot that you know some people may not see, but it's. The growth has been phenomenal. I mean, we've got so many, so much infusion of, of people from everywhere. The one thing that I always say is that is different is, is I compare it, the changes or how things are today compared to what they were as a child was that I mentioned earlier about uh, living on Park Row and going out and playing, you know, football and with the kids in the neighborhood or something, going bike riding. We thought nothing about just running out the door and leaving everything wide open. Never had a, a worry in the world. 
and nothing ever happened. You know, today, unfortunately, that just you don't do that. Uh, you just, it's just so much uh, yeah. out there that just you have to be careful of. Yeah. That's one of the big changes. Uh, the, you know, the, other than the physical growth, I mean, that's obvious. Uh, Dallas was uh, uh, when we moved north. I've got a picture somewhere of an aerial shot, an oblique shot that's uh, taking, uh, taken down from about, I think about Royal Lane, somewhere down uh, south. And there's nothing but field. Uh, it wasn't even, well, I think North Park might have been under construction. It wasn't even there, actually, in one of the pictures. And the first building you see, uh, this was taken sometime in the early 50s, uh, was, uh, or mid 50s, actually was the Meadows building at uh, Lover's Lane, just south of Lover's Lane. I mean, that's the first building of anything. So the growth is phenomenal. The traffic is, is horrendous <laughs> relative to what it was. Uh, but life's good. You know, now I love Dallas. I, I wouldn't think of living anywhere else. I'd like to go visit other, you know, we like visiting, but uh, uh, my roots are here, and uh, I love the city. Uh, I've made a life here. We, you know, we've had our family here. And, uh, and I'm very happy. The last thing I want to ask or mention is, um, have you been involved in, I know you have been, tell us about a couple of things that you were involved in, either civic or religious organizations. Well, I'm not civic. Uh, as a volunteer, I've been active in some organizations. The first one that comes to mind was the B'nai B'rith Youth. And my children, my son was involved, so I, we became involved. Susan became an advisor, and I became uh, um, chairman of the adult uh, board for a one a term. Um, and that was a good experience. And our son was uh, um, the last Olive uh, Sagan of, of um, Texoma and the first Olive Gadol of whatever is the North Texas one now. Uh, That's what it is, NTO, NTO. North Texas. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then uh, I was a volunteer and became a, a um, worked with the Jewish War Veterans of the U.S. since I was a, a veteran, of, you know. And Susan's uh, father brought us in because he was actively involved, and we enjoyed it. And I became very active. I volunteered. Susan and I volunteered to uh, do the bingo that they conducted monthly at, at Golden Acres on Centerville. And I called uh, for 25 years. Um, they, they, the, the folks there liked my calling because of the timbre of my voice. They could understand me, where some people, it, wouldn't, it didn't work. And I enjoyed it. And uh, it was a fun. I also, at the same time, uh, in conjunction with um, Harvey, um, Har what's Harvey's last name? The, 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 the organization, the oh, <laughs> Bloom. Bloom. Yeah. Uh, he was doing the uh, newsletter, and I said, "I'll help you." I, I had, in 1986, I had uh, purchased my first computer, so I became self-taught computer literate, and I said, "I'll help you," you know, with the. Uh, newsletter and I expanded on it and in one of the national conventions they had uh, I won or our paper won mm -hmm. uh, best newspaper in the, in the nation and then the next year they appointed me the national um, editor <laughs> which was an honor and table because I had nothing to do when you do a good job you get <laughs> you get, a get title. promoted you get a title. yeah, yeah. Um, then Somewhere in the middle of all that, I think in 1991, again, her Susan's father uh, brought us to a, asked me and Susan and some a few others to join, to come to a meeting of the Dallas Hebrew Free Loan Association, ah. and uh, we we came. They put the rush on us, <laughs> and they were all octogenarians. And they realized that they were literally if they didn't find some younger blood, that the organization would probably just die on the vine. We liked what we saw. In fact, uh, subsequently, it, was it is probably the most rewarding endeavor that I ever 
mm -hmm. had in my life the, to help people help themselves. And uh, so in 1991, they elected us to the board and then they stepped back and, and Marvin Feldman, who was who came in at the same time, he, was, he became president. I, the next term, uh, I, um, I was elected president. And several years later, so in 2001, Susan was elected president. In the midst of all that, then we got, Susan and I both got involved in, in the International Association of Hebrew Free Loans because we figured there's, um, you know, why try and reinvent the wheel every every time there's, a, you know, people in organizations that have, have uh, uh, been doing this for years, maybe we can, we can learn from them. We got really interested in, in, the, in that organization and then subsequently um, I became its president um, and then subsequently Susan became its president and she began. So Susan, when she became president of the Hebrew Free Loan, was the first female president in the history of the organization, which was uh, uh, founded in 1935. Hmm. Just as an aside, and it's really interesting, yeah, I found through Susan's father, who gave me some paperwork, the original articles that were written to form the organization, plus minutes from a, a couple um, meetings following board meetings. In fact, they're with the uh, Historical Society. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, my grandfather and my uncle, Sam, mm -hmm. are both listed as in, for, in that first few meetings, couple meetings. Were they charter members? No, no. they were not. They were not founding oh. members, but they did donate 25 cents, 50 cents, or whatever it was. It's, in, it's on those sheets. Mm -hmm. And I was very proud to see that because um, my dad was here, but uh, he was a very hard-working man who worked from five in the morning till probably seven at night. Mm -hmm. He had a grocery business in, on Deep Elm. Elm, that's probably right. Deep Elm. You know, I don't know how you pronounce it, but that's, that's what they call it now. Yeah. And I had wonderful experiences about that too. You know, that uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful little community. I have a lot of friends that I've known and met over the years that all had that, their roots back Mm -hmm. um, on that, those couple blocks uh, where there was prim predominantly Jewish merchants, right. pawn shops, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, as I mentioned a moment ago, the Hebrew Free Loan was, was really a very, self a very satisfying and rewarding experience. We, we were involved for about 20, 22, 23 years. Now we're in our 70s and uh, uh, others are doing whatever they do and uh, and we're satisfied that, you know I'm not sure if I'm going to take on any other volunteer jobs but I might if, if <laughs> I the right think one you came, might <laughs> if, if the right one came along can you sum it up for us about perhaps stating something that you are you feel you're the most proud of through the years I'm proud of, pr proud of predominantly, you know, raising a family, then being independent and successful. I'm proud of the, the work, the volunteer work that I have done with Susan as well, and that we've given back, you know, to the community, to kind of Olam, uh, in, a, in a form, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, not sure I would do it much different. I mean, I'm sure there's some things I would do different, but, you know, I'm satisfied. I'm, you know, when I uh, get ready to enter the next world, I, I, I think I'll feel comfortable that I've, you know, provided something, left something behind. Hopefully, well, that's my you. hope. I think so. Absolutely. Thank you, Alan, for this. It's been very enlightening.